Shalom, and welcome to our 23rd annual Feast of Tabernacles. This is part 75 of Preparing for Rulership. Morality is also defined as excellence. You must be excellent. You must what? Excel. Not a normal person. You must be above everybody else. You must be first class in excelling. You can't just excel and be in the A group, but you're supposed to be at the top of the A group. That's what I believe in. Absolutely at the apex. The summit. The zenith. I teach, believe, and know that Yahweh is great, good, terrible, and black. And that has caused some white people to ask me, well, what are you saying? You believe in black supremacy? No. Certainly don't. I don't believe that any man is better because his skin is black. I've seen some of the, in fact, all the trouble I ever had come out from here has been black folk. <laughs> look around, you see white folk in here, so, so if something bad go out from here, it had to come from someone who looked like us. I've always taught you from the beginning that the devil and Lucifer is what color? Black. The first devil was black. So anyone who teaches you that the white man is the devil and leave it at that is playing the skin color game. And anybody who teaches you to believe in black supremacy, that that's the answer, that too is the skin color game. You are not supreme because your skin is black. So I don't believe in black supremacy. Conversely, you must understand implicitly within my statement is, neither do I believe in white supremacy. <laughs> then what do you believe in Yahweh being Yahweh? I believe in supremacy. <laughs> that man must be supreme just like God. Regardless of your color. And if you don't come up to the standard, you're going to be chased off the earth. Just keep living and watching and you'll find out that the righteous are going to inherit the earth. And I don't care what your name and what you call yourself, but you better be right if you want to stay on this planet. Because <laughs> that's the only folk going to be left on it, I'm telling you now. And I don't care what language you speak. You can speak anything you want to speak, but you better learn how to speak right. <laughs> Righteous better be in your vocabulary somewhere. <laughs> Morality means well-behaved. It's defined as a well behaved person. Anyone who is ill behaved is immoral. Morality is also defined as a person practicing right conduct. You cannot act any way you want to. You cannot do your thing unless your thing is right. Not if you want to be approved by the Creator. And survive Yahweh calling for right conduct. Morality is also defined as principles, righteous moral principles. A man without principle is a wicked man, facetious, devious, deviant, lying, cunning. Deceiver, degenerate, wicked, bad, depraved, demented. So I teach you to study principles. And after we study principles, then we can practice them. Isn't it a shame that this type of knowledge 
is not taught preschool all through school. Have you noticed the white man, or just let's say the public schools of America, <laughs> let's get back off of that. Let's just deal with the public schools <laughs> and pretend you don't know who's running that. Notice they don't want the Bible in school. And the pretense is they don't want one religion over another one. I mean, can you imagine such hypocrisy? Man being taught principle, period, is better than an unprincipled country. <laughs> well, anyway, they say no Bible in school. So what, the, what are they really saying? No subjects on morality and ethics and righteousness and holiness and goodness and principles and right conduct is to be taught. Why? So they can raise up a nation of people who are rebellious against the laws of God. Then they have you in their trap. As long as you practice immorality and do everything wrong, they're happy with you. But anytime they get unhappy with you, then they bust you on wickedness? No. They say, you broke the laws of God. You're going to jail because you stole. Well, in the Bible it said, thou shalt not steal. So if there's been a class from childhood on why you should not steal and the penalties for stealing according to the Bible were enforced, there would be no society of thieves. But they raise up a nation of thieves and then bust you according to the laws of God. On television, movies, books, magazines, they teach you to kill all day long. You can't turn TV on within five minutes, somebody shot, cut, beat up, done something, just kill somebody. Wide Earth, they glorify crooks and criminals. Everybody heard about Wide Earth, Billy the Kid, Ma Parker and people. Whatever their names are, you know. I know you know. Gangsters, Mahone, uh, Mah what's his, what was his name? Al Capone. <laughs> what are they? They're made heroes. They're glorified. And when your kid goes out and pretends he's Al Capone, they bust him. Why? See, thou shalt not kill. That's in the Bible. No Bible, no principles. So you have children, people wake up today, they'll kill you, and you have an interview, and that's how you feel about it. Say, I feel good. <laughs> don't you feel sorry? No, I don't feel sorry. No principles taught, no morality taught. Everything that America busts you for is in the Bible telling you, don't do that. Now how many, then they get rich, stupid rich, from representing you breaking the laws of God. Well, what a system. It's called the criminal justice system. And that's correct. The only ones get justice are the criminals. They let one or two of us escape every now and then so that we can tell everybody else, believe in the system. <laughs> and anybody that's programmed to believe in a criminal justice system is, is, is sick. That should be justice for the righteous. Condemnation for the criminal. <laughs> I'm the only man 
teaching straight morality. And one of my subjects tonight, which I'm really on now, one of the definitions of morality is also ethics. That's E T H I C I. See yeah. That's what you call ethics. I see it. If you couldn't spell it, then you haven't been studying it. <laughs> then you sit out there and say, uh huh, that I know you haven't been studying it. Another definition of moral is true. Look what I'm telling politicians I support. All of these are attributes of the word morality. When I say I, I demand morality in office, I support morality. Look at what I'm demanding. Look at what I'm requiring. If he doesn't live up to it, we'll bust him. And if we don't have moral men, then I'm training them over here in Yahweh University to grow up and be moral. We're going to have a moral nation. Another definition of moral is right. You must be right. Another definition of morals is rules. You must follow the rules of God, Yahweh. Found right in the Bible. The rules for living are found right in the Bible. And when we practice these rules, look at our blessings. Look at the blessings we receive by practicing the rules of the Bible. And that's what we're doing. Another definition of morals is the teachings of Yahweh. The teaching of Yahweh, the mighty God. And you must teach them to your children. And when you have a conversation, your conversation should be replete with the teachings of the mighty God, Yahweh, the Creator. Can you imagine having a conversation, say you believe in God, and your conversation is everything but God. And then you ask me, what's wrong in your home? <laughs> Look what's missing. <laughs> if your conversation is everything but Yahweh, why should you think you can have peace? People say they believe in God. No, ever call his name. God is not his name. God is a title. I believe in God. What God? We call Yahweh's name. Yahweh! You got to talk about it. See, Yahweh loves to hear his name called. That's why I love for you to call my name. Because when you call my name, you call him my father's name. See, the creator, my father's name is Yahweh. So my name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. So when you call my name, you call his name twice. So I'm a double blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah, Yahweh. Another definition of morality is righteous judgment. Now, a lot of people make judgments, but without the balance of the laws of Yahweh in our lives, then our judgment is out of focus. We make irrational judgments. But when our judgments are based upon the principles of morality, which is what? Righteousness being just, upright, honest, honorable, etc., then you're making a balanced, good, principled judgment then when you make your decision your judgment it has to turn out okay 
Because you based it on everything that's right and good. The only way you can make an improper judgment is your knowledge is improper. I don't have any trouble making judgments because my judgments are right and true and just and honest, principled, according to the teachings of Yahweh. So I always make a righteous judgment and so can you. Another definition of morality is conformity. What kind of conformity? You can conform to two different things. You can conform to the devil, you can conform to Yahweh. So evidently, morality is dealing with one kind of conformity. Conform to the law, statutes, judgments, and commandments of Yahweh. And when you conform to his will, everything in your life is going to be okay. I have proven that if you keep doing good, though the world talk against you, you'll still come out on top. Everything that could be said evil has been said against me. But I never stopped to fight evil with evil. Whatever they say and whatever they do, I don't care what it is, I don't spend my time dealing with that. I don't spend my time throwing rocks. I invite everybody to throw another brick. You don't have any bricks, go find some. I'm busy building a house and I don't want to have to buy no bricks. Throw me one. I keep doing good. Good wins over evil. And I'm proving it. So where everybody was talking bad, now everybody's talking good. Because why? Why is everybody talking good? Because I'm doing good. <laughs> I didn't just start doing good. I've always done good from day one. I've always been good to people been good by people. I've always helped those that come around me. I'm still doing the same. I haven't changed. My deeds are good. I feed, clothe, and house the poor and the needy. And I bless your life abundantly. I don't take, I give. All the riches is in my disciples' name, not mine. I'm a man that doesn't own a thing, yet I own everything. The world is mine, and the fullness thereof. This whole universe is mine. Everything you see is mine. What you don't see is mine. It's all mine. It belongs to me. I'm the creator of everything. So I claim it, and you can have it. All you have to do is receive me. And then you become a co-heir, a joint heir with me in the kingdom of Yahweh. Isn't that fabulous? No, it's all about conforming. To the laws of Yahweh. Another definition of morality is being virtuous. Now we used to think that that meant just women. Who can find a virtuous woman? We quote, power, power, <laughs> Well, we could quote that fast as long as it was consistent. And I, I let that go on for about five years. About two years ago, I said, well, brothers, I'm looking for virtuous men. <clears throat> By definition, we must be a virtuous people. Another definition of morality is chaste. We must be chaste. And does that apply to women only? Men and women. Morality applies to both sexes equally. Another definition of morality is righteous action. Your actions must be in conformity to the will and the laws of Yahweh. 
Another definition of Yahweh, I mean of morality, is divine mind. Your mind must become divine. My mind is divine. So when you come and learn from my mind and of my mind, then you're taking on divine mentality. Another definition of morality is feelings. We must have feelings one for another. That's not an option. That's a requirement. Another definition of morality is will. We must exercise the will of Yahweh. And another definition of morality is we must have a righteous character. We must show forth the character of Yahweh, which is all of the divine attributes. As many as you can name, if you can name 99, if you can name 100, if you can name 1,000, that if those are his characteristics, you must have the same one. I'm here to make you become just like the creator of the universe, Yahweh himself, perfect. And anyone who says you can't be perfect is a liar and wants you to not have a goal to reach for. See, if you don't believe that you have to be perfect, then you'll never strive for perfection. You just as well drop that as an attribute of God. Perfection is one of his attributes. That's one of my attributes. I am perfect. I am perfect. I may not always be right, but I'm never wrong. Everybody hear me? I said, I may not always be right, but I am never wrong. Now that should leave somebody mystified. Anybody mystified by that quality of mine? That's my quality. If it seems diametrically opposed to itself, that's because you don't understand. I may not always be right, but I'm never wrong. Anybody have a little problem understanding that? Just one? Two? Should be more than that with that problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast up. Three, four, five. Sure, I know some of you have probably never heard me say that before. Well, I'll explain it to you. I said, I may not be, I may not always be right, but I'm never wrong. What do I mean? I may not always be right as you perceive I should be, but I'm never wrong in the sight of my father Yahweh who chose me and sent me and raised me up to raise you up. And he is my judge, not you. If you think I'm wrong, that's because you have set yourself up to be judged. And the words say, judge not, judge me not, lest you be judged by that which you try to judge. You must first get that little moat out of your own eye. And some of you don't have a moat, some of you have a log in your eye trying to judge somebody else. You have to get those logs and splinters and boards out your eye first. Because you're under terrible pain with things in your eye. Trying to judge people. Your judgment will be wrong. Glory to Yahweh. And last, it's not the last one, but it's the last one I'm going to teach on. Morality defined as nature. Nature is one of the definitions of morality. What nature? What kind of nature? The nature of the Creator, Yahweh. To be moral, you must have the nature of the Creator, Yahweh. His nature is right, holy, pure, perfect, good. And you must have these same attributes. These attributes are not something you read about. 
You must live this and you must study this. This must become your subject. So tonight I have reviewed definitions of morality which include definitions of ethics. And I hope you enjoyed that refresher. And on last week, we had a fabulous time on the subject ethics. In fact, we got really excited here on the subject of ethics. We discovered in ethics that we must never judge a man by what? His outward appearance. But by his what? His inward, by the heart. Yahweh looks at the what? The heart. And what does the heart mean spiritually? The mind. All right, that's where that's found. You must learn how to judge. It's not how a person looks on the outside. And it's not what they're talking about. Unless it's wrong, then that's automatically categorizing them for what they are. But if a person is looking like he's supposed to be right, dressed up like a Hebrew, and you think he's right, he may be wrong. So don't judge by how they look. Judge by what comes out their lips. Because what comes out their lips verifies what's in their mind. And if your mind is right, what comes out your lips will be right. Praise God. This concludes Part 75 of Preparing for Rulership.